Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Quintero here. Today, I'm going to show you how to make realistic mock-ups of t-shirts and other products using Photoshop and a little bit of Illustrator. All right, let's go. Perfect. So I've been debating on making this tutorial for a while because I actually make and sell a um, t-shirt template. Um, this exact photo is the one I used, but I'm a big believer in helping people out and teaching people how to do things, um, you know, regardless of the bottom line or whatever kind of potential profits I could make. Uh, I really want to share this knowledge with you guys. And plus I only sell this front t-shirt and this can be applied to hoodies, long sleeve t-shirts, products that aren't apparel. So I think this is something good for you to be able to learn if you're selling merch, because it'll help you make some really, really, you know, professional and realistic looking mock-ups. All right. So we're going to start with this um, t-shirt photo that I have. Now, I took this photo a long time ago and cropped out the background and everything. I really suggest taking your own photos. Don't use anything from the internet because that's always a bad idea. You never know when something is copyrighted or, you know, you can just get in trouble for using somebody else's photos. So always take your own photo. Always start with stuff that's yours. All right. So the first thing that I usually do when I'm making a, um, a mock-up like this is I make sure that my base image doesn't have any, uh, any colors or anything that I don't need. Like if you take this from your iPhone and it's just starting out as a base white, you really want to make sure that you desaturate it. So I just go command shift U. This one's already desaturated, so there's no worries there. If you're using something like a mug that has a pop color, you can't really do that. So you might need to play with the curves, levels, color balance, just to make sure that you get the base of where you're trying to make your template as clean and clear as possible. This is from my brand name layouts download pack that I offer. And I'm just going to use this for some sample art here. And I think I'm actually going to add in some color so that we can see how it reacts with the, the template when it's made. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste this into Photoshop as a new layer, and I'm going to make it a smart object so I can have all the data that I need later in case I need to make any changes or do anything like that. All right, I'm going to hide that layer for now, and I'm going to go ahead and call this T-shirt base and this one artwork because we always name our layers. So there's a couple ways you can do this and there's like an easy way and a more complicated way. And I usually try to start with just the easy way to see how much I can get without really having to manipulate too much of this image, especially if I'm working on a project where I have to do a lot of mock-ups and I can just kind of keep it moving super fast. So the first thing that I usually do is select my artwork by holding command and clicking on the thumbnail part of the layer and then selecting my uh, t-shirt or mock-up layer and uh, copying that same shape. And I usually use command J because it just makes a new layer from the selection. So then I move that part above the artwork layer and I change the blending mode to multiply. Now you can see what it does here is it takes those textures and things and actually applies them up on top of that. So it gives it kind of a realistic texture there getting started. But this one is not super dramatic. It's mostly just making it a little bit darker. So what I do is I'll duplicate that layer again and make one invisible so I can go back to it if I make a mistake. And I'll press Command L for my levels and I will drag the darker slider to try to get some more of those shadows showing and then bump this white one over a little bit so you can really see the change in the, the contrast of the, the darks and lights. So that looks a little bit more dramatic there. This looks great on a white t-shirt, but it might not be so easy if you're trying to change the color of your blank and it might not be so prominent whenever you are 
using different colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, make that layer invisible again. And I'm going to select this layer again by pressing command and clicking the thumbnail, make a new layer with the plus button. And then I'm going to make this t-shirt um, some sort of color. I don't wanna do something super ugly, maybe like a sage green. So command, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, option delete will fill in this layer. And then I'm going to change it to multiply. And you can see it doesn't really look realistic. So this is where I start to realize that I do have to do this the long way. And that's totally fine because I can use this same template going forward. And this is essentially how I made my template that I sell. So instead of making the color layer multiply over the t-shirt, I drag the color layer under and I make a duplicate of this um, t-shirt base layer here. And I will keep this one white and set that one to multiply. Now you can see it kind of looks pretty similar to whenever I put the color layer on top. But what I'm gonna do here is actually do what I did earlier, make one to save in case I need it later. And I'm going to play with the levels of this one that is showing. So I'm gonna darken it up a bit like I did that first pass of the top uh, textured layer and see that we can get some more realistic shadows and deeper, you know, depth here, deeper depth. Yeah, good one. But you can see the shadows a lot more prominent in these areas here. But the problem is it still doesn't look realistic. It really just kind of looks flat and bland and it really looks photoshopped. So that's where this other layer is gonna come in play. So now I'm going to take this one and change the blending mode to maybe um, where uh, one of these looks good. I think it's soft light, soft light. So you can see how it brings in more of the bright textures onto this shirt and those shadows from the previous layer are still showing. But the problem is now your color has changed dramatically. So on this layer, I'll go back to my levels and I'll grab my dark slider and I'll start dragging it over until this layer starts to darken up because here you're starting to get some real, real big contrast and you can see clearly the shadow layer and the highlights layer popping off of each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this one to highlights. I cannot type today. Highlights, shadows. And then I'm gonna take the highlights layer and I'm gonna lower the opacity to about 50% and, and maybe a little bit more. So now here you can really start to see those highlights popping as well as those shadows. Now my color kind of got a little bit off still. It's not quite that sage green that I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with the hue and saturation and just kind of get a visual approval of the color that I want because I don't want it to be super saturated. I don't want it to be super contrasted, dark or light. I really just, need to eyeball this layer and make sure that it gets to the color, tone, and shade that I want it to be. Now I think that's a lot closer. And if you look at the thumbnail here, it's not quite what I chose in the beginning, but it doesn't matter because visually my mock-up looks how I want it to. All right, so let's go back to this layer. Oh no, I lost which one it was because I didn't re label it. That's why we always name our layers. Okay, this is the, let's call this art texture. Now let's make sure that it is on my art o work layer, apparently. I just can't type today. Okay. If you're planning on using this as a template where you're going to put multiple pieces of art, it's probably not a good idea to use the shape of the art like I did here. So I'm actually going to back up, delete those, and I'm going to make another copy of this t-shirt base. And what I'm gonna do instead is hold option and click between the two layers so that it masks this to the artwork. So now you can replace this artwork here and it doesn't matter what shape it is, it's gonna retain the texture and feel and stuff that is applied to it whenever we edit this 
artwork texture layer onto it. Okay, so playing with the levels there. Now I'm gonna play with the opacity and I'm going to rename this artwork texture since I deleted the original one that I called artwork texture. This is looking so much better than it did before and I feel like it looks way more realistic, but there's still a little something missing from the overall look and feel that I like to apply when I'm making mockups. All right, one thing I don't like is whenever you're using this super sharp vector art against a photo like this, you can really see the difference in the quality. Even with the texture on here, it doesn't necessarily look realistic. So what I like to do is take my artwork layer here and I go to filter noise, add noise, and here I just add a little pop of noise somewhere between like one and 5% usually just to get a little bit extra in there. That's 34, not three or four. All right, so I'm gonna stick with three and then I go back up to filter, blur, and actually just one hit of blur on top of it usually gives it enough so that you can see that it looks a little bit closer to the original photo and gives it some more realistic texture. Now you can adjust these, you know, maybe instead of using the regular blur, you can go to the um, Gaussian blur, not that much, um, but you can really play with the amount of blur that you have here, depending on what your photo looks like. If you have something that's a little bit lower quality because you took it on your phone versus a professional camera, you know, you might need to add more noise and blur just to make sure that those two things blend and look good together. I'm going to back out of here. And you know, when it's zoomed out, you can't really tell the difference, but I can tell the difference. And that's what really matters here. Right, I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit and place it where I want it. That's pretty good. Now there is another step that I like to do, especially when I'm doing t-shirts, because the fabric has this, you know, wrinkle texture, which I specifically put in the photo because I wanted it to look realistic and I wanted it not to look like a stock photo so that it wouldn't be super flat. We can actually use uh, something in Photoshop to help apply those same wrinkles to the artwork. So I'm gonna turn off my artwork layer here for a second. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this highlights layer, and I'm gonna copy it to the top of everything, and I'm going to set it back to normal. And I'm gonna turn the opacity all the way up. Now, I like using a darker um, settings version of this template whenever I do this step, because to me, it really helps the program like see those peaks, highlights, and shadows and use them. What I also like to do is go back up to the um, Gaussian blur here. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Leave a comment below and let me know how to actually pronounce that word. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of grain texture in here still. So I like to blow up the blur a little bit to get rid of some of those textures so that the program isn't necessarily reading textures as the highs and lows and it's only getting these harsh, you know, wrinkles with these shadows and super hard highlights. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is save this as the displacement map. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and turn my artwork back on. And actually I'm gonna delete that layer. I'm gonna do save as in the same location. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this one T-shirt mockup. On your artwork layer, go back up to filter, distort, displace. Now these settings, honestly, I don't know exactly what they, what they do. It's hard. You kind of have to play with them to figure it out. But for this particular image at this size, I know that I can use like a five horizontal, four vertical. You really do kind of have to play with it sometimes. Go ahead and leave everything else the way it is. Click OK. And then it's going to open up this because it's looking for the displacement map. So now you can choose the file that you made earlier. And once it's chosen, you can see that it has very, very slightly added in this variation over where the wrinkles in your fabric are. This area right here really kind of shows you. Now it's super subtle with the settings that I used since I did do the five and four, but if you would have left that at the 10 and 10, 
I mean, it would have gone super high. Actually, you know what? I'm not doing anything else right now. Let's see what happens if I leave it at 10. Go back to displace, set these back to 10. All right, make sure that you select your displacement map and boom, look at that. It's like crazy wrinkled. I guess if you had something that was super wavy, like maybe if it was a flag or something and you really wanted to get all of those waves in there, you could use it that, um, that high up. But for mine, I really like to leave it at the fours and fives because it's just a little bit more realistic since this shirt is really laying down on a flat surface. That was worth the test though, I like it. All right, I just noticed something wrong with my art. You guys have probably been seeing it and yelling at your screen, but this is exactly why I left my art as a smart object. I just noticed that this little space right here in her legs did not apply the correct color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in my smart object and I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and it's updated. That is the wonderful thing about smart objects. All right, that's it. I think it looks super pro. I love the way the texture makes it look really screen printed. And I'll throw up a side by side of what it looks like whenever you just have one uh, multiply layer over your color and artwork. So we can really see the difference of how much more realistic this looks. All right, guys, so I hope that helps. I hope it made sense. And I hope that you can see how to use that on any other products that you need to make mock-ups for. Of course, it works really well for t-shirts because of the fabric texture and whatnot, but you can really, really apply it to anything. Leave a comment below and let me know what you plan on using this for and if you are gonna be using this method on any other product types. If this is your first time checking out any of my videos, I really appreciate it and please consider giving this video a like, the little thumbs up button, subscribing, and hitting that bell for notifications. All right, thank you guys. We'll catch you on the next one.